uh, impossibility of free will, uh, not a biblical concept. Um, in the world today, that's it's almost like everybody believes in free will. That's like the, the starting point. You have to believe in that uh, in order to <laughs> converse with, with anybody about anything Christian. And of course, free will cannot exist because then that would mean there, that God is not all sovereign. So anyway, what I want to discuss here is that just thinking about that, you wonder why is, why is free will such a big deal? And a lot of people say, well, it explains why there's evil. Um, of course it doesn't, but people use it for that. That's, I think, where it really, um, in the recent centuries, really heated up is because people wanted a way to describe, you know, you, you have this reality with sin and evil, and people want to describe those as not being created by God, uh, which, of course, sin can't be, Galatians 2.17, but uh, evil is created by God, Isaiah 45, seven. There's other verses that say that as well. So those two are not the same fruit. Um, sin and evil, of course. I've talked about this before. What I want to say is that it seems that there's something else going on. People get so crazy about when I say anything against free will. Not, not in the jail ministry. The jail ministry, this doesn't come up that much. It comes up here and there, though. Um, and, you know, there are a number of jail inmates that are interested in Calvinism and hyper-Calvinism, and they get it. But rejection of free will is a reduction of self. And we live in, a, in an age of, of worship of the self. It seems that the free will theology, if you attack it, you're really going after the core of the problem in today's reality, which is that we live in a pride system. That includes, that can be anything from universities to churches to uh, any human system uh, is going to be replete with pride. And, you know, that was Satan's first sin in the garden, Ezekiel 20 17. And so you sort of can develop this concept that that may have scarred. Uh, the reality, you know, there's talk of cursing going on in Romans 8. And a lot of, you know, there, there's sort of this residue of these early sins, which have scarred everything and um, have to do with these curses that the Lord has put on um, reality. And so you can see uh, the self-interest everywhere. It's interesting, evolutionists, I'm, I'm personally not evolutionist. I don't believe in it. Any kind of punctuated equilibrium or Darwinian evolution or anything like that but it's just that's not the point here if you do find I think you can I don't know if you are not a Christian if you believe in those I mean you could probably somehow figure out a way to you read scripture into be, those being facts or you know those being the accurate kind of reality I don't but um you know there's a lot you know a lot of people wanting to do that so anyway the idea is that evolutionists have no, noted the self-interest inherent in living creatures. And they've developed their evolutionary studies based on this. Not really more the behavioral analysis of animals like in the study of ethology is evolutionary based. But really what that's saying is it's based on hum, uh, self-interest of humans and other creatures. That's sort of the engine of evolutionary studies and animal behavior studies in, uh, to my knowledge these days. Which is kind of interesting because that's sort of a mapping or a scientific analysis of this self-interest that is in all creatures the, from that original sin, the devil in the garden. So, but anyway, um, yeah, I just think that the free will theology is very special to people because it, it brings proud, you know, makes us proud and gives us pride. And you know, we think we're important. Galatians six verse three says we are nothing. There's other verses that say the same thing in scripture. The nations are nothing, book of Isaiah and so forth. Uh, so that's really clear on what our function is. God is is the all important. He's the source of meaning, the source of everything. Nothing matters really but God. Um, even my own self is just uh, kind of a, is a, is a nothing. Um, that's discussed heavily in the end of my new book, Hyper Calvinist Universal Salvation. You can use Galatians 6 3 to come up with a theology of why, how God can be hyper sovereign and there can be, you know, sin, but God doesn't create the sin. It's right in scripture. The people, nobody's figured this out for 2,000 years because I don't think people are following the scripture and trusting it for what it says. Everybody wants to analyze it and think God needs help or something, uh, which is, of course, not true. The wisdom of men is foolishness to God. First Corinthians says that in a couple places in the first three chapters of First Corinthians. So anyway, I think that the free will theology is so sacred and special to people is because it's the one that protects the pride of people and protects the 
uh, giving humans credit and thinking that we're special, we're something, and and, and we uh, matter. And uh, really, we don't. Only God matters. And this is considered um, heresy, what I'm saying to some friends of mine here in Kalamazoo. Um, but the scripture is on my side. Uh, that's the only reason it would be considered heresy is because people want to uphold the, uh, a false importance of humanity uh, when uh, only God matters. Remember Job thirteen fifteen, I think it is? Even if he slay me, I still trust in him. I, um, yeah, that's Job thirteen fifteen. So that shows you how little importance we have and how the absolute trust and perfect creator that we are to have. So anyway, just wanted to talk about that. It's uh, very straightforward and clear, it seems to me, the reason for the absolute protection of this non-biblical concept of free will uh, is because humans want to take the credit. They want to be special. They want to be important. They want to do the works of God. They want to take over that. That's Satan's first sin in the garden was he wanted to be the one who's beautiful and special and has the brightness. Um, and he wanted to be the one who's admired. He wanted to admire himself, not God. So that's a uh, sin of you know, self-importance and pride and so forth. And that's why we're all diseased and plagued with this. So and that's why in today's church, uh, you have um, this as being so important, uh, even though it directly violates the scripture. So thanks for watching.